on the RGSL chat chamber, we welcomed Mars Vainoskis, who's a senior partner at Evershed's Riga office. He has more than 15 years of experience in legal banking, finance, commercial and company law, as well as IT law and EU law. We discuss topics as the future of legal profession, as well as technological impact on unemployment in this field. Hello, this is the ninth episode of the Chat Chamber podcast. We are very glad to introduce in this studio Maris Vanovskis. Oh, definitely. I think uh, that others describe best the person because sometimes it's very hard to, for yourself to say, you know, your best traits as in an interview, you know, I am the best communicator or the best in a field or something like that. But oh, yeah. definitely you are one of the best in a field, I think, in law. Uh, I would like to say that. Don't deny it, please. Um, you're a senior partner at Evershed's um, and um, in Riga, in Evershed's office That's in Riga. Right. And you have such a large, you know, experience. And I think that is the best thing to have, how to develop yourself to gain the knowledge. And uh, maybe, CRISPR, you have something else to add. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, I think this would be a very, very insightful episode for our listeners because you are an attorney, right? You are uh, really practicing law and not only, uh, you know, reading about it and, and theori theorizing about it. So, so I think this would be really insightful and perhaps the something provocative to, to start the first discussion. First and foremost, <laughs> Martin, Christopher, it's very I'm very pleased to be here, right? And uh, to see you as such, you know, active and proactive two young developing lawyers and diplomats, I understand, right? Yeah, so, I, I mean, I mean, it's all the pleasure is mine and uh, I'm looking forward for an insightful conversation and uh, I'm open to whatever you would like to ask. Right. That's great. And also I would like to remind that behind the camera we have our lovely technical support Arnis from first year Yay. and so thank you for <laughs> really thank you Arnis for this uh, without that we wouldn't be probably uh, in a, such a beautiful environment and being recorded right and it's good to be in this very fine um, place I, rem I have my own memories of it and and uh, and also good to see you well at least with a proper distance but yeah. in person <laughs> I think you know irrespective of all this digital age technology it is so important we're yeah. social human indeed, beings indeed, right yeah. so I mean that's that's something that we still uh, that's this that this year uh, it comes short although mm -hmm. Uh, if I can tell you just uh, from from um, from business perspective, from uh, law firm running, this uh, this um, we already got onto the, this pandemic uh, speed within the first week of last year, mid March, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it uh, it was nothing really uh, spectacular about it. We already were working with uh, programs like Microsoft Teams, and obviously then everybody is getting an account, and and we simply continue working. Uh, of course, you know, uh, th the time goes on and you develop a little bit um, a certain communication is key, right? Active communication is key here. And so instead of just having, uh, let's say, Monday morning uh, law firm meetings, we uh, nowadays have every morning for 10, 15 minutes some kind of you know, organizational call. Mm -hmm. So you, so you like, like you go to the work, you go to the office. But other than that, I think it's really, uh, and uh, it's also a good thing about the lawyers. Our profession, in our, in my opinion, and based on the experience with the pandemic, uh, is sustainable, right? With the proper attitude and the proper vision, uh, it's all, no problem at all. And also this artificial intelligence which is coming in, it will, in my opinion, not uh, challenge us as the lawyers, it will help us lawyers. And uh, so uh, no, it's, it's just, just good to see mm -hmm. you guys. Uh, uh, I, I uh, just heard that you said that you have some good, exper uh, good uh, memories from this place. What, were, what is something that you remember from this place? Right, I, I was uh, coming here, where I was writing my master's thesis and... Uh, and then quite a lot of resources here, but I was more coming here for this ambience, for, mm -hmm. for you know, it's the, this library. I am still, by the way, I am still uh, a student, and my, one of my mottos is, uh, uh, if you stop studying, you better retire, right? Yeah. So you should study your entire professional life. 
and I'm student, I'm PhD student in the University of Latvia already quite quite a few quite a few years I would say but but this core uh, course study which I'm doing already mm -hmm. my master thesis were devoted it and now about uh, 15 20 years later I'm still continuing the same now it's about the court jurisprudence right mm -hmm. its importance and because people deserve similar uh, resolutions mm -hmm. in similar cases. That is the principle of uh, simply uh, of, of justice, right? And, and now I'm adding additional perspective to it, this artificial intelligence. Yeah. I am studying, um, uh, I have a very, very uh, vast, uh, like, like Napoleon, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, you know, <laughs> look at, at uh, 50 yeah. countries. I think it's uh, maybe it's too much of a burden, but I'm working through it. And it's very interesting to see um, experience, uh, basically country by country, what is those two? What are those tools which courts, court systems, court administrators use to facilitate the work of the judges, of uh, other professionals relevant to yeah. legal, um, uh, so attorneys, uh, prosecutors, notaries, students, uh, pr law professors, right? So, and and they have um, these systems which help analyze cases, which help. Uh, uh, in, in, in a correct way, uh, basically putting uh, putting together some kind of summaries of, of the cases. Those the, the court jurisprudence consists of these of these let's say these these diamonds or these uh, responses because a, a person is interested on what the law tells as a response to this particular legal problem which I have. So, and when a court uh, responds to it in a, quality, uh, in a quality way and gives a uh, rather abstract uh, statement, mm -hmm. it becomes this court jurisprudence. And therefore my, uh, my passion, I mean, and it has been through the years, has been this, um, apart from business law, has been this legal theory mm -hmm. and, and, and court jurisprudence as a source of law, which was yeah. definitely not in, in the Soviet Union. It was a little bit twisted understanding of it. But, but, but now it came with the understanding of court practice. Now we call it court jurisprudence. This is this, this good part, right, of, of the court practice. And this is, uh, this is my doctoral thesis. So, yeah, I am also a continuing student. Do you, do you also uh, look at uh, issues regarding how artificial intelligence uh, infringes some kind of rights in, in court practice, or it's only about the tools that may be used for the legal profession? Right. I think uh, we should not let uh, this artificial intelligence decide cases, right? But the, uh, but, but the systems are good at predicting. They're better than humans. So uh, also in, in America, I see that artificial intelligence based on the facts, it afterwards predicts with 85% accuracy versus a, a human being 70, 60, something like that. But, but uh, you know, and for that reason, lawyers will be needed and are needed and will be needed because uh, st this this machine, well, it can be useful maybe for totally standard, maybe some uh, cases, but when there is a dispute, when you need to apply to the law, uh, you need a human being with this capability to uh, actually apply it according to the correct methods. As you have uh, studied already, uh, there, uh, there are a number of methods which you need to skillfully apply to get a reasonable and just result. Because, um, because um, I, I think that if there is one subject you really need to uh, study hard, and I mean really hard, it is the legal methodology, it is the practice, it is how you apply law. Because I am not supporter of this uh, of these uh, legal floodgates that if there is a problem you just change the law. No, a skillful lawyer is able and can uh, find a proper resolution within the current legal system. 
Um, I even, within my humble means, I even set up a a, uh, a, a, a small program for giving, uh, let's say, grants for one research paper a year, which is based on uh, modern methods of applying law. So it's simply the the way of applying law, the way applying it in a modern way, and how to uh, basically, and, and, and this has, this has, this program has generated also already very, very good uh, report. The most recent one on the way how you what is the proper way of basically um, you know this is the the development of the law related to lobbying right and what is what is the correct way to perform lobbying not like some kind of under table deals when the member of parliament and I have spoken to many of them they even sometimes do not know whose proposal that is which he or she is defending right they 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 are a little bit awkward they say well it's uh, these are uh, people people's proposals okay but but when you when you lobby lobbying is nothing bad but you need to disclose you need to have completely open and transparent activity. I have about uh, uh, 12 years of experience or even more in Foreign Investors Council, like a, a real voice of the, not only foreign investors, but basically these are Latvian companies with uh, foreign capital uh, in majority or in totality. But these are the local companies, the voice of the business, right? And and, and from that I have, always, I have taken this, it has been hard at times because you fight with these insolvency uh, reforms and it, th that was a big, uh, big problem many years ago. But now the system has developed. Also, another achievement is we had, for instance, 300 arbitration courts in Latvia. Is it, uh, should we have even more, 400? Or, or it's a little, little bit too much, right? Uh, Sweden, as an established arbitration venue, has one or two uh, courts, right? Latvia, 300, which means, obviously, you guessed it right, mom, the number of them are just pocket courts set up for to resolve one particular dispute or, or really to um, not to give justice. And, 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 and that has changed, right? The Foreign Investors Council were really a, a voice against it. Also, court efficiency and things like that. The most recent one is uh, we put some hopes actually on this uh, economical matters court, right? So we, we, we look forward to it. It is also a, an idea which has developed, which has uh, been implemented now. And as of the end of this month, it will, be, it will go live. So. Uh, this is this is uh, this is basically what keeps uh, that keeps a lawyer going, what keeps a practice going, what keeps you motivated, apart from the uh, of course you know day to day uh, business. Mm -hmm. And if you have to take a look, um, you know you have uh, fifty year uh, years experience in legal field, yeah. approximately. Yeah. And not fifty, not yet fifty, but uh, 15. more than fifteen. Yes. Yeah, yeah, 15, <laughs> yeah. 15, yeah. yeah. Um, if you take a look, what has change during these 15 years mm -hmm. um, in sp specifically in your you know local office right uh, have you noticed you know a transition um, you know a, a track of uh, going you know how is is there a is there um how to say is there a position that has been replaced by Techn dig digital or techn technological transformation. Right. Like, you know, there are internships, there are interns and uh, legal assistants. Maybe s these positions have, you know, been replaced by digital work. Well, no, actually not. Uh, but we definitely do use much more uh, digital solutions. Just this morning, I was uh, I was on a an, on a uh, on a lecture with our great uh, cooperation partner and client, uh, Digital Mind, uh, a very a, a company uh, which provides which basically say a clean desk policy and mm -hmm. clean PC policy, meaning no, uh, no uh, needed fa papers, piles yeah. of paper. So my desk, um, uh, 15 years ago, you would come in or, or uh, that would be really um, piles of papers, really. And, 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 uh, and at the end of the week, it's total mess, total mess. Mm -hmm. Then you maybe yeah. come over a weekend and you, and you put in, in these, you know, uh, in, 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 in smaller piles, yeah. right? But you come in on Monday 
and you are again uh, the the amount of this work gives you stress yeah, as such, yeah, right? Yeah, it's overwhelming. <laughs> you, you know, and but uh, and now I come into the work uh, place um, and or or, or or at home, and uh, I would have no papers on my desk at all, right? So that is that is obviously one uh, visible transformation, and what I also mean with clean PC policy is also not do not create mess on your in your own computers. I do it sometimes myself. You know, urgent document comes in. You, yeah, I, I wonder how uh, uh, desktops of students look like. Are they are they clean and tidy, or just you know everything there? So also try to, uh, if possible, uh, structure it right and 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 put the, the the correct document in the correct place, and that 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 helps you. That helps you simply. Um, keep uh, more calm in your mind, yeah. more organized. This this has changed, but but what I wanted to say, this uh, there is so much information going on, so so much interactions, and and what what is a typical thing for lawyers, non-lawyers, businesses, is the in proper information management, right? And there we come to those digital solutions, and and also um, uh, this morning where we're talking mm -hmm. about corporate governance of, of a company. And corporate governance of a company, of course, there's a shareholders and supervisory board and management board, the entire company staff, related entities, and they all pass certain decisions and they all pass, there are certain procedures. And when somebody passes decision, the other uh, entity who needs to implement it needs to know that it needs mm -hmm. to implement it. And, and we're talking about this, this uh, again, digitalization as a help to the business, but definitely not as a replacement to the business. Every business uh, these days, apart from uh, the general business strategy, I would say they also need their own digitalization strategy, their document management strategy. That is, their, uh, that is how they um, uh, relate to their clients, yes? So the, the, the attitude, uh, shareholders meetings also this is another thing I was I, I was lecturing yesterday we, we had a with all stock exchange clients for instance uh, meetings and sharing experience how the shareholders meetings have taken place over the past year when uh, mostly they were digital right and and there were so uh, sometimes many fears that when you when you move from physical meetings into more or less let's say uh, you know digital meetings with pre-voting with with registration over the internet there will be a lot of fraud companies will be stolen management will take over mm -hmm. right but that has not happened on the contrary, um, more shareholders, you know, uh, if a shareholder can participate in the meeting without coming there, without this additional expense, without yeah. uh, additional time investment for travel, uh, actually there is more shareholder participation than, than, than less. Those fears, those doubts uh, were just simply not accurate. And that's a good thing. Another way how, how digital age, how they help businesses rather than prevent businesses from operating, but help. Mm -hmm. um, right. Actually, your answer makes me wonder, can it be stated, would you agree with this statement that uh, law firms nowadays have to think more like businesses than a generation ago, coming with this whole digitalization? Oh, sphere? absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, it, it is really, um, and, and you really nailed it, because um, a lawyer uh, is not just a, a, a person who, uh, who, who just gets a, a very structured request from the client and then develops a memorandum or an opinion on 20 pages, sends over, and that is it. Not anymore, but it used to be like that, right? So now a lawyer, uh, what clients look into the lawyer? The, the clients look into the lawyer as somebody who understands their business without uh, much being uh, asked about it and B, not as an external uh, advisor, but more like an extension of its own business team, so right? You're, so you're that is what they really expect. Going in-house, yeah. in a sense. Well, in a sense, going in-house, but also external lawyer, being the extension of the client's in-house. This is what they demand, they rightfully demand it, and those lawyers who uh, who follow this lead, and, uh, and, and they must follow, otherwise you are simply out of the business. 
and, and lawyers so much get into the uh, also uh, in our practice I see we have developed now these products which are not purely legal but mm -hmm. they are also very much risk assessment r related uh, mm -hmm. business assessment related for instance compliance practice right so um, a, we already started building it seven f five seven years ago now we have very established compliance practice and it's 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 not just legal when you analyze um, let's say uh, compliance with uh, well data protection compliance yeah. or uh, com competition law compliance or anti-money laundering compliance sanctions compliance compliance with client identification requirements yeah. you need to go much beyond uh, the, the the law yeah and i have also uh, for you two tips for or one tip <laughs> if you go to you want to have a, a fantastic job interview, right? With and it's not only with a with a law firm, but maybe with your future employer. Mm -hmm. You know what you do? You do a little uh, analysis, a little risk assessment analysis before the interview. You simply uh, you should do what the businesses are sometimes not doing themselves because the businesses are sometimes a little bit carried. Uh, with their own problems, mm -hmm. but they do not stop and pause and think about th simple things. What are our key risks and how we are going to deal with them? So you think who they are, right? What are they doing? Who are their clients? What product or service do they provide to the clients? And what are the distribution channels of this product and service? And what risks are related to this uh, to their business model? For instance, if a company has one big, uh, just um, it's, it could be a, a, a CHP plant with just mm -hmm. one client del delivering uh, electricity, another client delivering heating, probably not so big risk of external personal data protection, right? So. Uh, whereas a company, uh, especially in pharma sectors, other sectors, that that's definitely um, um, you know personal data uh, risks heavy business. The same goes. You simply make and you and you tell to the potential employer that you have done uh, a, a, a little risk assessment, a mm -hmm. little research. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I would be extremely um, uh, uh, you know surprised if you don't finish very well in that interview. Mm -hmm. Because um, because that is what the businesses now are just 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 learning uh, and doing it simple, not doing like everything, but you need to do what matters, mm -hmm. what is important for your business from risk management perspective, from compliance perspective. So so stepping into the shoes more in the process of uh, you know job seeking, right? Yes, well, uh, mm -hmm. that's that applies to job seeking. That applies to business itself. Yeah. That applies for doing a quality job to, to to increase actually the the, the value of the business. Yeah. Because um, I, I work a lot with with companies now, uh, which which is also extremely satisfying experience. Companies going into stock exchange, right? Companies which would like to raise. Do you know what is what is the key difference? between um, like borrowing the money into the bank from mm -hmm. the bank and uh, trying to raise money from stock exchange like uh, uh, selling your company shares or selling the bonds do you think you know uh, strategical or, 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 or a real difference when you borrow from the bank and you go into the into the capital markets to raise money I think I think what I would say is that in one perspective like the bank is the one that evaluates your business yeah. right? But if you give that to the people, in a sense, or to the uh, well investing companies, that there is this more flexibility in evaluation and more, in a sense, well, I would say more in a sense uh, in incentive to uh, uh, improve your business because you will always be scrutinized by your uh, by a many people uh, on a daily basis, not just giving one loan and that's all. What do you think, Marta? Uh, I don't know. The first thing that came into my mind for both situations is risk. Right. Because you cannot predict the outcome. Uh, you can imagine you you have this image of what you would like to achieve, but you never know the cost of it. So right. it's very tricky. Um, so to invest uh, in, in a company, you need to be, you need to convince 
that you, you are a good compensate. standing company yes. to, to gain trust. Yes. Well, from banks, you also need to gain trust. But there's this, uh, I think, and you were both very, very close and actually mm -hmm. uh, the correct uh, answers. Ten points to both of you. <laughs> but, <laughs> Thank you. But, you know, when you go to the bank, right, they would give you, okay, they would make the assessment. They would, uh, they would uh, confirm your loan. They would give you a, a, a loan agreement yeah. to sign. You can negotiate it, but let's be frank, not, not too much. So you borrow on other, uh, let's say, on external terms. Mm -hmm. You borrow on your creditor terms. Now, when you go into the stock exchange, when you issue your own shares and you issue the bonds, you borrow on your own terms, right? You write down the terms. And you need to be so good as a company and so convincing based on your track record, based on your credentials, based on, on the way you present your investment case, that people will subscribe to your shares, which is the highest, uh, obviously the highest trust is to buy shares in the company because shares is not a loan. The company does not need to give back the money, uh, but, but the investors, of course, hope that the company give back the dividends over time and the value will increase, right? But, but again, so you see this, this, this total difference between borrowing on other terms and borrowing on your own terms. And, 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 and this, is, this is this development finance. Fascinating pro projects with, with, with clients. And again, for a, for a law firm, to write a prospectus. And by the way, law firms write the prospectus, obviously, with massive client input. And, uh, and, uh, and it is a strategic partnership with an investment bank. But lawyers need to uh, write a prospectus for the client, mm -hmm. whereas business description, company description, you know, legal matters, risk factors. And as just a, a, a pure technical lawyer, you would not have the skills to do that unless you really study and go deep into the client's business. You understand, you do um, a, a deep due diligence on, on, on and you... And, and so, of course, it, it builds up with, with experience, but, but these projects are so uh, good in a way that they give you, your team, and, and the client this added value through business understanding. And so we come back again to the point that as, as, as young developing lawyers, um, I mean, you can, you can succeed basically in any uh, in every area of the law. I would say there are no areas that we should totally write, write off. Mm. But in any of those areas, you need to understand deep the consequences, why that is needed, you know, who needs it, why it needs it, and who are the users. So that is, that is, that is the heart of the matter. But then comes the question when I'm listening to, to you talking about how actually um, important nowadays it is to have such knowledge for a lawyer to be uh, adjustable to changes what is happening, you know, in the surrounding, in the world. Um, how do you think, um, to what extent and if, if in some way the education system has to be changed in order to um, make future lawyers more knowledgeable in the field of digitalization, about the ways how businesses develop, right. how, how to do that? Maybe you have an idea. Well, uh, yeah, um, I think, you know, irrespective of anything, um, still, um, well, education and, and university, it is for the academical qualifications, for the skills, don't, don't forget to learn about the legal method, which we already talked about. But I think that, that, that universities are developing. They are looking into the, what, what the business actually needs. And, and I think Riga Graduate School of Law is a very good example. Also, if we look at, at, at the programs, right? So this program, Law and Finance, yeah, this, this, this puts together those two. These are both social sciences. Yeah. Finance mm -hmm. uh, and economics, as you know, it's not so much exact science. It's also basically a social science. So law and finance, you put it together. This is what, 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 what business needs. I think uh, the, the program combining law and legal, uh, sorry, uh, and IT, right? Mm -hmm. So again, I think the university has followed the what, what the market requires. Law and diplomacy, again, it's putting together two high-level soft skills, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, 
and 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 um, and are really looking uh, forward to see you as as developing diplomats, right? Representing mm -hmm. our country with great esteem and pride going forward. So, uh, in, in in that respect, um, Riga Graduate School of Law has also. Uh, I, I have myself participated in a number of these kind of brainstorms, program form forming, because yes, uh, we had we had this feeling our law firm uh, does these also these master classes and, and uh, programs, yeah. and I had the feeling that maybe for uh, for a financial services um, lawyer or or for a course uh, like banking, it's not so relevant for the young students to teach the procedure of establishing a bank, which documents you need to put together, what is the process, well, how many students will start with the yeah. first thing establishing yeah. a bank, or for instance, how uh, technically our budget is formed, that it consists of uh, appropriations, that it consists of the following, let's say, the, the, the tax split and everything, so yes, it, it's useful, but but much more still useful would be to, uh, to, to, to dig into the lending transactions, right? Their types. What is, for instance, mezzanine loan? How it differs from the from, from uh, standard loan, right? What is a senior, junior loans? Uh, what is a, uh, let's say, um, uh, you know, structured finance and things like that and, and how they are relevant for the businesses. Go through them. Go, uh, go again, do, do, do case analysis. I think this, this is developing, right? Uh, but on the other hand, of course, uh, only... You know, when you when you come into the law firm, you start working with real cases. It's not university too, but still, it's always it's it's um, it is a little bit different, right? It is a little bit different because um, to also this process, how you make a company public, right? All this um, mm -hmm. you you basically learn through the process. Uh, but what universities should should teach is is the technical knowledge, technical skills, for instance, of, of the ways how company can go public. Mm -hmm. There can be for technical listing, simply putting the company, the current company shares without new capital into the stock exchange. There can be a private placement, which is without big offering, which is without you know big big advertising. You already get certain investors, mm -hmm. and then you go with company public, mm -hmm. and then the, the, the IPO, which you all know, IPO is initial public offering. Yeah. That is the the, the the big thing, and and the the university should teach the the technical, the process, the requirements, but 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 law firms and practice will teach the rest. Yeah. Has there been something that uh, you have been inspired by or, or understood, learned from newer lawyers that perhaps have, uh, you know, entered uh, your workplace yeah. and and do, do their uh, views on the world or law uh, are different from you? Is there some kind of mentality difference or just is, the, is it that they have newer knowledge or how do you see that? I have actually very fantastic um, uh, observations in that respect. Every, like, I'm not older generation, but every generation <laughs> of kind of thinks that, that the next generation is, is, is well, you know, this, this thing. When we grew up, right, of it course. was not like that. But, but I am uh, fascinated about that, that, that the younger generation is definitely... Um, so, uh, yes, uh, you... Um, and I, I can say you, uh, very good things is you, you know your, um, you know that you are this personality awareness, right? Putting a, um, you know, value in yourself, right? This is, this is what I do observe and this relates. And then, and then I, I've been also arguing and, 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 and on, on very, uh, not arguing, but learning from the younger lawyers in our law firm, especially on the subjects of detailed understanding and interpretation of EU law, right? Mm -hmm. I think that is what the universities 
teach, I think, uh, Riga Graduate School especially, uh, and, and well, uh, other universities, University of Latvia, uh, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I, I have a feeling that the EU uh, law is taught on, on good level because the students are uh, prepared to come with, with references, with mm -hmm. arguments, with case law. Um, uh, you know, they said, yes, but in that book and this book, and I don't even know all these books and things like that. And then you, uh, of course, you... But but as as an as a law firm um, as 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 a partner, you sometimes need to uh, uh, to actually scope down and to uh, to give the proper perspective for this work. Uh, what mm -hmm. I mean, the clients are not always interested in all possible case law and this academical discussion. They need an answer to this particular question which they have asked, right? And uh, um, let's say head of legal, he will ask or she will ask for a little bit more uh, detailed understanding. She, he or she, or courts, of course, it depends on whom do you work. You deliver the work to head of legal, you del deliver work just to CEO, yeah. or you deliver work to the to the court. It's it's very it, it's different, but 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 for the younger lawyers. Uh, with all your extremely, as I would say, advanced already technical and knowledge skills, again, you know, understanding what, uh, who is the user of your work and, and the way how you address these issues, CEO will take your 10-page, uh, uh, you know, detailed work, I throw yeah. it into the corner, I say, I will charge you now two hours because I have to read this through. Yes, but yeah. he will ask, he will ask to give you, let's say, a half pager, uh, very structured, mm -hmm. structured half pager. What uh, what is the situation, background, what you have done, what are the risks, and most importantly, what, how these risks should be managed. How what is your real advice, right? And, and, and he will really demand it. And, and just, again, for, for younger lawyers, my, my, uh, you, you tend to write too long mm -hmm. sentences. Right? Sometimes a sentence could go, like I don't know, not half a page. Of I would say a quarter of a page. And that is way too long. You get, uh, you get uh, uh, lost in your own thoughts sometimes. I, 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 read, I read papers and I see... The idea starts developing, then you lose it, to some, and then <laughs> and at then some point you come emerges. back to it. Yes, yeah. but already it's too late. Yeah. Whereas in business, business lawyers, and, and I remember structure, structure, structure. Right. So this is, this is, this is, uh, this is puts your own thinking into certain order. I sometimes even ask younger lawyers to write like a title for each paragraph which they are doing in an opinion, and suddenly say, why do I need to do that? That's a little bit stupid. Or uh, No. But, but then, then they say, well, yes, when I needed to give a title to each paragraph, I started thinking whether something is not redundant, whether I'm not lost, whether it follows in a logical argumentation mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So to sum up your question, technical skills, very good. Uh, argumentation skills uh, need to be developed. But structuring skills definitely need to be developed for um, and, and, and that you uh, reasoning structuring skills that is that is what the businesses will will teach you uh, and better you prepare for it already mm. so that the business doesn't teach you it hard time yeah. by yeah. throwing your <laughs> ten pager into the corner. Yeah, I think yeah. this also uh, goes back to what you said about you know this kind of job seeking risk assessment, right? That that uh, you always need to understand what is the employer's risks and and aims, and right. in this situation it's the same. What does, does the CEO want from you, right? And yes. what does the head of legal want from you, right? And, and really understanding what is the audience. Understanding who is your client, um, and and what, what what stepping into your into the client's shoes again, thinking about that if your client is the head of legal, how about his boss? Will you deliver such an advice? which he or she can easily send up to the management board and say, well, this is, that's the advice, basically. Not to try to him, uh, for him or her, understand every nitty-gritty detail of the advice himself, 
But simply, when you deliver a useful product, the clients reward you. Yeah. Simplicity is key. Yeah. Well, yes, uh, I, I would say, yeah, s indeed. Um, uh, so everything needs to be uh, plain and simple, but not like, not nothing. Well, plain and simple doesn't mean that it is easy. Or, um, or, or, or just, let's say, uh, super, um, let's say, too simple, right? But plain, right? Plain. Uh, not too many Latin words also, if possible. I know lawyers like to do this, but from time to time you can put it in, especially maybe to the courts and, and, and when you do your own academical uh, writings. But, but the businesses... They, they kind of understand it, but then they said it uh, once, please send the advice in English, <laughs> because it was in English, but, but was, was, uh, with too many Latin verbs, you know, in it. I have, I have heard this uh, quote that uh, perfection is when there is nothing to subtract, in a sense, that yeah. there, you have just uh, in some kind of a text or in your work, only the essential, only the Something with value is there, right? Yeah. Nothing more. Well, of course, you need to strive always for this per perfection and clarity. But I can say with 20 years uh, experience, there is never a totally perfect draft, right? You can develop it, um, you know, and, and it will never be perfect. But when it is just about, just about, and uh, you also uh, need to understand there are deadlines involved in business, right? So when it is just about... You, you just send it over. There is never a perfect draft, but, uh, but you definitely uh, strive for perfection with everything you do. Also, when as a lawyer, when a student, um, I think I, I try, not always, uh, but, but at least the mindset is to do the current work as if it was the only case you are simply having, right? To at least try to do it. And also with, with, with your course uh, um, papers and, and with, okay, I have just one course. This is my single course in, in my entire university. And you do it like that, right? And, 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 and if you do it like this, then I think uh, the, you will get rewarded with, what is now, 10 or, uh, or it's 100 or how do are you, what, what are the grades yeah, nowadays? I think, I think mostly it's 10. Mostly it's 10. A, in, in 10. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when you were talking about Latin terms, uh, it came to my mind the very, very much known um, quote that you have to explain to a person as if it was a child in order them to understand. I think that it is the right approach how to explain to your clients. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. why I just, you just imagine that this person you're writing to is a person who does not have an idea what you're talking about. You try to explain it very clearly, very shortly, that, 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 dot, dot, dot. And they read it, yeah, it's not that hard, you know. But, but you it, would it come across time. as a fantastic um, coach to a, to a younger lawyer, actually, with all these with all these statements, because this is it is as simple as that, but it's not as simple as that to do it. Exactly, you need to have Definitely. these the, the skills, um, the the practice, but you need to understand that that is what the business needs. Not only business, but like every um, every reader. Um, by, by, by sending something not structured, something uh, unfinished, you are also not uh, conveying uh, respect to the person to, to, with whom you communicate. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, respect is, 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 is so important in, in, in business, in life. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we touched upon this uh, at some point, but I want to go back. Uh, there is a stereotype, and you know, when we talk about digitalization and technologies, people always think robots, like right. ro robots everywhere. So they are thinking of mass unemployment, and not taking like a different perspective of thinking maybe not mass mass uh, um, unemployment, but mass deployment. Like we are changing the professions but helping ourselves using these digital tools that actually help us to work easier. Yeah. And uh, maybe um, you can make a good example from your daily life uh, as a proof to our listeners that, you know, it's not true that robots will take over the world or legal field or any other, you know, field um, in our daily lives. Right. Because uh, it's, it's very simple. Um, 
human beings uh, so far. Uh, so all the, the business always is a constant stage of development. And, and, and the lawyers are also, they are like, like following the business. There will always be legal matters to resolve. Uh, and I, I, I dare to say that the lawyers will be actually needed more, needed more for compliance right, uh, needed more for, uh, you know, in-depth um, work related to uh, digitalization, data protection matters, um, uh, health services, energy, all of this, um, all these, these, these uh, consumer matters. Well, yes, certain areas will uh, require less uh, legal uh, human work. I would guess maybe uh, parts of family law, maybe it will be easier to get married or, or divorced or, or something like that with, uh, two, uh, with, with or, 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 or leave a will without, um, without too much of a human touch, okay? But 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 the um, you know progress is everything, and and w when progress stops, then then the world will stop, right? But but I, I think that the progress will always require uh, new challenges, and 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 lawyers. But but think about this, um, lawyer uh, more from this, let's say, from person who helps to uh, advance business, but helps to advance business in a totally, let's say, legal and compliant manner. I think that this compliance and uh, also ESG, you know what ESG stands for? Okay, environment, social and governments, uh, governance. I think that uh, there are already a number of law firms in the United States who uh, put, for instance, a, a such such that they practice ESG, and that is an example of this development. That when 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 businesses need legal uh, and this this environment, there is a whole lot of of, of matters of, of legal relevance uh, related to, to to nature protection, to to environmental activities, to licenses, to uh, green energy, everything like that social it is about it is about the protection of employees their rights uh, communities um, everything everything related to uh, to uh, let's say uh, social employment matters and governance governance what we talked about all this uh, let's say the way how corporations uh, function in a way so that they are sustainable is this ESG is some kind of a, a leveraging uh, a leveraging thing? So uh, it's one thing. It's it's leveraging commercial with social responsibility. And when you have this balance, not overly commercial and not just social, but when you have this balance, then the business can go in uh, forward in a sustainable way. And and this is just an example to, to reflect on your question. Five years ago, lawyers were not telling that they are doing ESG. <laughs> Nowadays, they yeah. are. And there will be not only ESG, but but more and more in developing uh, areas where, where, where lawyers, the main thing is to um, stay active and proactive, most important, mm. uh, and stay simply switch it on. I really like yeah. what you said about this balance between corporate and environmental yeah. and, and social interests right. in general, right? But why do, why do you look, it, uh, look on it in terms of, of it being a balance? Why can it, can't it be both in, in the same time, right? Why can can't some kind of social uh, and environmental, uh, I don't know, uh, aspects uh, be even beneficial for, for corporate and, and commercial aspects? Well, yeah, and that's it. So uh, these, these two items. So I was doing, actually, I was a ballroom dancer 20 years ago, and I had a very good coach. He said, a couple, a couple is a minimum of two working in harmony. And these two principles, uh, governance, uh, the, the commercial aspects and social aspects, is a minimum two when working in harmony, they can develop great results. It's not uh, one or the other. They are already connected because uh, one without the other does not exist, right? Pure commercial without, uh, uh, with, without employment, without mm -hmm. social matters, it just does not exist, right? So it's a minimum of two working in harmony. Yeah. 
I, 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 I just, I don't know why this question came into my mind, but have you ever, um, in your experience uh, in a law firm, uh, experienced a client who is paranoid about their safety, uh, about their, their document safety and... Right. Uh, and or maybe there has been a situation that this person trusts a specific lawyer in the law firm, and he or she doesn't want any other to work on their projects or or their you know. Oh yes, well, uh, the legal profession is uh, well. Uh, client confidentiality is one of the pillars of the legal of profession, and and the respective whether the client. Uh, demands attitude like you said or the client is more relaxed mm -hmm. we have the same uh, the lawyers need to have the same standard of client confidentiality and and obviously you know uh, that that's 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 key that is key but yes um, uh, th there are clients uh, l like that and uh, and obviously they sometimes come uh, we can't blame them because they come with different backgrounds and experiences uh, based on my uh, my uh, recollection, sometimes clients who would have such overly, uh, let's say, um, um, you know, uh, cautious attitude is simply who have had uh, bad experiences in the past, mm -hmm. and that's the way how they would like to manage their risks going forward, right? So, um, but but um, but that's nothing unusual. Yeah, yeah, I, and yeah. then then I have this, you know, further question: To what extent a lawyer needs a good negotiation skills with a client to convince, yeah. to prove, you know, we we are, you know, we are safe. Not, no, nothing bad is going to happen. Yeah, well, it's uh, no. Of course, lawyers also are just a human. We also rely on our IT systems, our service providers, and and everything else. But but basically, well, and and you touched uh, an interesting point. You know, lawyer and and client. This is always. Uh, it is not just clients telling what to do and lawyer just doing. It's always a a two way approach because lawyer is also there for the legality. And, uh, and 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 there is this this this, this need to find only legal solutions which work, and and obviously there is this um, uh, uh, just uh, um, I w I am working on um, I am very busy lawyer, but still I took uh, let's say. Pro bono work, I went to a number of cases, uh, seven uh, hard cases so far on uh, very tough cases, family law, international child abduction cases, right? They're crazy. It's, 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 it's really hard. But what I learned, you know, uh, you and your client uh, and, and, and all this discussion. So I think sometimes the best interest of the client is not to appeal every single uh, decision. Sometimes the best interest of the client is actually to sit down with this other counterparty, with this spouse, uh, and, and, and resolve their family issues. I know how hard it is, but sometimes you as a lawyer, you, you sometimes need to explain in a very composed and calm manner to your client what you think is actually the best. And sometimes litigating the case throughout the legal system, all tiers, that will not resolve the case. But doing a, a mediation of type, or, or let's say a negotiations, you call it, maybe mediations, but, but coming together, discussing your problems, uh, this is, I think, uh, even if I have, uh, let's say, if I if I lose the case, uh, but but then the, uh, the 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 mother and 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 the and the father reunite the family and they send me on WhatsApp after uh, half a year a message. Uh, hey, here we are in Disneyland together with the children. I have won the case, but not lost the case because uh, so and 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 you know so this is a two way um, discussion. Uh, lawyer, a client. It's all. It it becomes. You cannot step over a certain, you know, you, you still, you, at, at, at all times, you cannot get too, fa uh, like, familiar with your client. Yes, there is always this, uh, th there is a certain professional, um, um, I'd not say barrier, but, but a line, right? But, but it's... Um, uh, this is not too red. This line, but but there is a line. But but you you discuss a lot with your client. I think you seem yeah. very enthusiastic, and this is something that really has inspired me uh, in this interview. Uh, in a sense, what you have understood from from your profession, and but would you say that this enthusiasm uh, which you are sharing now 
is something that uh, already was when you were studying or choosing even uh, to study law? Or, or, or was it something that developed only with time, with your experience, with your clients and all the various cases that you have uh, seen? Right. Well, I think uh, if you, if you uh, just, if you are in, the, as a base case, if you are a lawyer, you just need to have one, one thing, right? You just uh, need to be uh, willing to help, right? To assist. To help sometimes without uh, asking anything actually back, but 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 uh, a proper service always yields results. But it, but the service is not for the result, right? But for helping, and with that in mind, you um, then you do um, a diversification of your practice, right? I think a a, a lawyer should do uh, right the, the the core practice. But sometimes you just need to mix it with uh, ideal leadership activities, uh, which I just mentioned, Foreign Investors Council, British Chamber of Commerce, American Chamber of Commerce, where you, where you meet businesses, where you, where you discuss uh, topical problems, where you so that. And then I think the third thing is actually uh, pro bono work, which you just simply need to do without asking anything, but simply a pro bono publico means for the good of the society, right? And this, if you have the combination of the three, then you hopefully uh, stay motivated and, and, and going, doing just one of the three, e and any one of the three, I think is, uh, is um, you just need a, a mix um, because, um, because as every human being, you need change, right? And, and, and I think that is, that is a response which, which keeps us going and hopefully will keep us going. But what did uh, the small Maris, you know, yeah. in, in high school, uh, what did he think when choosing, uh, you know, what to study? What for was some your reason, I, I, I knew that I will be a lawyer. Really? I don't know for what, oh. what reason, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I, I like it. it um, so, and, and then uh, actually so many uh, classmates from our class um, went to the faculty of law. So it, it was actually like quite... Social. Oh yeah, well, you know, it's uh, as well, but but um, uh, so it's um, yeah. I think uh, a, a legal profession is a good in a way that you can, you are not just uh, you will hopefully not get lost, right? A lawyer can do a number of other matters. Lawyer can do um, economics. Lawyer can do business management. Lawyer can do administration. Lawyer can uh, you know go, um, you know. So it's 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 quite. Um, uh, so uh, you have chosen this, this, I think, the fantastic combination of, of legal and, and diplomacy. So many presidents have been lawyers, right? And, and, and we, looking back at Latvia, the, the, the founding fathers of, of, of Latvian presidents, lawyers, okay? So, so, many, so many esteemed uh, lawyers have, have been, uh, but you don't need just to be president. You, you just want to be, you, you just, um, I think you, you find the way how you give. And by giving, you are gaining. And this is, I think, this is what you, what, what is, what is an absolute must uh, when you, when you are practicing as, as, as a lawyer. So this freedom is something that uh, you know, perhaps, uh, is something that you enjoy in your profession. Oh yeah, every day is just really uh, different. Sometimes, sometimes, uh, uh, and and <laughs> actually, sometimes quite stressful, right? Uh, but then again, uh, if you do things right, so. You, you 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 manage it Mondays are like hell sometimes right so everybody wants to know and and and, and these days sometimes clients want these like mo almost immediate responses they want to feel that they are the only client as I said yeah. Yeah, so only client well in, in real life it's not so easy but at the same time yes it's it's about um, it, it is uh, lo well lawyer in private practice uh, especially in Latvia yes so it's still a quite a rather small uh, well small economy small country you need to be able to do a, a number of um, practice areas you cannot do like in our esteemed in our UK office you would have lawyers who are doing for instance just uh, certain pension funds for for, 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 for for let's say 10 years and not just pension funds but but a specific uh, uh, type of pension funds as their practice so the, uh, the the specialization is so deep because because of the larger no because of the 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 scope but in latvia i think we are we are we are kind of lucky in a way because our small size 
does not allow us to get too uh, just you know too technical in 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 one aspect but having said that um, specialization is is key and i suggest you as also as young lawyers already time will pass quickly and and i sometimes say to students yes you can you can um, you can try uh, doing uh, coursework in, in public law, uh, thesis in criminal law, uh, master's thesis in uh, maybe, um, I don't know, you know, uh, human rights and so, yes, but then you get a little bit scattered, right? So what you need to think, what really motivates you, which, which area, and work quite consistently already from, from early study years. Um, yes, um, a, a super professional needs to know everything about a particular area, just simply everything, and something about everything and everything about what you are really doing. So, and, 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 and in that way, don't just get all over the place. Don't, yes, you can try, but, but have this thinking, what is really my core interest? Is it, is, it, is it public law? Is it private law? Is it um, human rights? Uh, you can succeed in any of those. But simply don't do simply everything at the same time. Then it gets a little bit tricky. Maybe, you know, we are approaching the end. Uh, right. So maybe you have a question to us or maybe something you would like to say to our listeners that we haven't discussed yet. All right. I mean, just... Uh, Obviously, I, I very much enjoyed you, and I'm uh, so hopeful about our future. I, I see you, how you are motivated. I'm sure your, your, your classmates are. I know that this year has not been the, the easiest. Um, my, um, I have a boy also, not a boy, well, already 19 years uh, old, but already a little bit missing this, uh, this study life, right? So uh, uh, all these screens and everything, but, but try to be... Try to make the best out of it. Develop your skills, especially, um, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it is harder to, uh, when you have these screens, to stay active and interactive. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes hard. It's easier uh, to, uh, not to switch on the, 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 the video and, 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 and just... But, but, but stay active and stay proactive. This is, I would say, uh, uh, the, the key message uh, to, to you and, and, and all the great listeners here. And, uh, and for the time being, stay negative. <laughs> okay. This is a good one. This is a good one. Mari? Thank you for being in the podcast. I think this was very active and proactive, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, definitely. You know, you know yeah. we had great discussion. You yeah. even asked thank us you. a question in the middle of the interview. That's very interactive, yeah. really. So, thank you very it, it, much. It was a great thank experience. You. Thank you.